Welcome to the Fizzmas show. Uh, we've been away for a bit, but we're back. We're back and we're back. I'm, I'm saying that for a specific reason, because today's special guest, he loves saying that. And he used to get a wicket in cricket. I'm back. I'm back, back, back. Tadi Shavalane. Well, we've got a special guest today. Obviously, the World Cup has been heated, it's been happening. And South Africa officially out of the World Cup, which means that the focus then turns to the other nations, the other top four nations who will progress to the semi finals. So, plenty to talk about there. But before we get into that, let's do a bit of admin, right? So, make sure you guys keep subscribing, keep downloading the podcast and uh, Podzilla Media. And that's all over your different platforms where you can get your podcasts. So, make sure that you keep subscribing and leave your reviews and interact with us as we keep bringing you some of the freshest content from around the world of sport, especially in South Africa. Now, I did mention a special guest. He's already messing up the studio here. He's touching things he's not supposed to touch. And he's going to be laughing here. Tandi Shabalala. A lot of people are, are, are going to be listening and saying, yo, that guy could play cricket. Where has he been? <laughs> Fabo, what's happening? Um, <clears throat> thanks, Mazi. Thanks for having me. Um, well, a lot has been happening. Um... I've just been doing my, my work silently. Um, I'm in the process now of, uh, of starting my own academy. So, so just behind the scenes, a lot has been happening. Um, hopefully I'll get more involved in the future with, uh, with the CSA structures and and, and obviously um, help those that come before us um, to be able to, to achieve their dreams one day of, of playing at the highest level. Now, I want to focus a little bit about you before we get stuck into the proteus. I mean... Let's speak about your career, um, lots of ups and downs, you know, you kind of shot to, to stardom at a young age, and then you kind of vanished off the scene. I mean, talk me through that, talk me through that start, you know, playing for South Africa, getting that wicket of Sachin Tendulkar, I mean, I've got a clip of it on YouTube, and I saw how much it meant to you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gone quickly, eh? Um, yeah, look, um, like you said, my, my career uh, had a lot of ups and downs. But I can safely say, sitting here, that I'm, I'm, I'm confident with, um, with what I've achieved. Um, I know that I could have achieved more, played a lot more games for South Africa. Things were different back then. I didn't get as many opportunities, opportunities as I felt that I, I could have gotten at that stage, to be able to showcase um, the talent that I had. And obviously, things didn't go well with the management in in the free state uh, towards the. The latter part of my career, um, and obviously I had a fallout with with the management in the free state. Took a break from the game for about two three years, and suddenly got a call from Lance Luzner, um, who believed in me that uh, that I still had a lot to offer to to cricket South Africa. And um, yeah, I'm glad that happened. I, I I never really felt that it was the end in Bloemfontein, so I worked hard at my game and tried to keep myself in the best possible shape that that I could be in. And I went to Devon and I played for two years. And, and I think after my second stint or the, the, the second year into my contract, I think six, seven months into my contract, I felt that it was time. I wasn't quite the bowler that I was um, when I was a bit younger. And, um, and I felt that uh, cricket was taking quite a lot of my time to, to be able to establish other things in my life, to be able to move in, in, in a different direction. And, and obviously the age wasn't on my side. I, the decision to come back was to try and push to play for South Africa again. And once I saw that with the likes of Rabada, the likes of Petluka, your young guys, uh, coming into the game the same way that I was young and exciting, for me it was... Um, Did you almost feel like your time had, had come? That time had gone? Or your uh, opportunity had gone? Yeah, I felt that. I, and I thought, obviously, with Tahir doing well for the Proteus at the time and the time that I, had, uh, I was coming back, the likes of Keshav Maharaj, who, who I was competing with at the Dolphins, doing quite nicely. Um, it, it's reality probably sank in with me, and, and I'm glad that I made that decision. A lot of people questioned why so early in my career, but for other people, they retired at 35 or at 39. Uh, for me, I felt it was the time. I want to take you back now to the Free State. Um, obviously, I mean, I know your story um, as, as someone who's been close to you over the years, and I've always found it puzzling that you get a young spinner, a young black spinner, playing at the game, playing for South Africa A, I believe, that season that you lost your contract, you've represented South Africa. I mean, how does that happen? You know, how does that happen? I, 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 I want to I add something to that, yeah. actually. So a second, a second question to that mix is, 
do you feel that you were a misunderstood character? Definitely. I still am to this day. I, I felt, I felt um, at the time um, you, you, went, you weren't allowed to voice your opinions. And in Free State at the time, I felt I was a senior player and I wasn't afforded the same opportunities to somebody who had been in the team the same length of time that I, that I, was, uh, that I was in the team. So all of that, uh, those classes sort of like bumped up and, and before you knew it, I, I sort of like, I was seen as somebody who was destructive into, into the setup, into the team because I was, I was trying to voice my opinion as a, as a strong character, which I've always been. And um, I, was, I probably felt at the time when all of that was happening, I was playing my best cricket for South African A-side. So for me to have lost my contract, but I'm playing for South African A-side and doing well, um, I had just come off the tour against Bangladesh, where in the newspapers I was probably one of the, the better performers with the ball. And two weeks later, I land in the free state and I'm having clashes with the coach because I'm just not getting the opportunities I'm supposed to be getting. Mm. So that was very frustrating because uh, at the time when you're doing well for the South African team, you would probably feel that going back to provincial uh, setup, you'll be given a, a leadership role to be able to, to then express yourself and to be able to stand up as a senior player and perform. So that, that was against me and I wasn't going to sit back and, and, and just stand and, let, and allow things to happen that way. So I stood up and um, yeah, and obviously things didn't go according, accordingly for me. And um, yeah, and, and my career was cut short like that, which was obviously um, um, a surprise to a lot of people. I, I think Cody Fonsell at the time was, was puzzled who had been the guy that has backed me through my young days, um, starting with Free State and, and going all the way to representing the Proteus. So it was a surprise to a lot of people uh, based on the, the talent that I was showing and the potential that I was showing to be able to make the next step and to play a lot more for, for the Proteus. I want to know one thing, and I'm sure the people listening that want to wanna know one thing. At what age did you lose that contract? I mean, I mean, we're talking about a spinner here. So at what age did you lose that contract? I was 24, 24, wow. 25 at the time. So... I hadn't so, even reached so, my, so it, my, so it, my prime as a spin bowler. I was, wow. I was 24 years of age. And um, yeah, I uh, obviously having represented South Africa at a very young age, um, you probably come back and, and I wasn't really bitter that I had played about six games at the time. Like I said, I felt probably at 24, 25, it was a, a, a step too big when I was 20 or, 20 or 19 when I was called for the Proteus. But at 24, 25, I had felt that I'm, I'm, try, I'm starting to mm. discover what it takes to play for the Proteus at, at SAA level. I'm starting to perform well at emerging tours in Australia um, against the likes of Sri Lanka, um, the likes of India A, eh? bowling to, to guys like Virat Kohli at the time when they were coming up to, to prominence. So at the time, I felt like I needed to be back then and... Um, and to be given the platform to be able to to be able to do more, to be able to bowl more, and unfortunately, um, I didn't see eye, eye eye to eye with the coach at the time at the Free State, and it it wasn't just me. A couple of players that didn't see eye to eye with him were shoved uh, along the side, or were pushed away from the system, and which was unfair. But uh, unfortunately, that's that that seems to be something that happens in the Free State. I want that to sink in, everyone. Um... 24 years old we speak about national treasures we speak about spin bowling being an art 24 years old playing for south africa a and you lose your provincial contract wow i'll never i'll never understand it you know um i'll never understand it but you know i guess life moves on um and I mean, how, how was life for you? I mean, after, after that, after that, I mean, I'm sure it was tough. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, th I think that period uh, between 2010 and 2013, I, it was even tough to walk in the streets. People asking you, what's going on? You've got so much talent. Up. I remember coming back, coming up to Joburg and playing club cricket and the LPL and, and, and seeing the Lions players, some of the players coming to me and say, what what has happened to Tandi Chabalala? I mean, you you are literally one of the best spinners in the country. And to prove it all, I I was probably man of the match at every game I played at the LPL. Club cricket became 
no exercise for me because my standards were so high and, and it was so easy for me to be able to put in performances week in, week out and take four, five, six weeks at a club level. And people would then question me as, as to what happened. And look, at the time I, 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 I voiced my opinions, I, I, I spoke to the CEO of Cricket South Africa at the time I, and to no avail. I mean, nobody stood up. Nobody stood up to say, okay, let's, let's shift Tandi Chabalala to another franchise and see what happens. Yeah, it's, it's, it vanished very quickly. I mean, in, in, I had hope living the free state at the time but before you realized nobody stood up in, in two or three years and, and I was out in the world and it was, it was an eye-opening experience for me. It was a very tough period for me and my family at the time and, and I learned a lot of lessons and, 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 and I had to move on and, and find another way. And, um, yeah. Yeah, ne? Your life, you can't script this thing, eh? No, you can't. You can't. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. And, um, look, um, it's, it's been, it's been a long time now. When I look back, it's, it, it still pains me. It still hurts me too. I don't think it's a pain that will ever go away. I, I truly honestly believed in myself and, and a lot of people I think did. And to this day, sometimes I do, I do see people playing international cricket, a lot of them that I had played with, bamboozled, competed with at SAE level. So to me, it, 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 I mean, if you look at this, the, the South African team right now, you've got guys like JP Dumini, Fav Duplessis was my roommate at the National Academy. Half of the Proteus team, uh, I probably I had played with them at SAA level. The guy like a guy like Lonobo Totobe went to play a lot of games for Cricket South Africa. So a lot of people went on to to have solid a solid uh, careers playing for South Africa. And talent wise, I was probably there with them. Um, I was performing in and out um, every every year at, at provincial level, especially at white ball cricket. So for that to have happened to me, you, you can only ask yourself, what is it that I, that I did wrong? Um, so quite frankly, it had, I had to question the color of my skin at the time because that's, that's basically what it, what it was at the time. It was, it was we, myself, um, I mean, players like Lutz Bosman, players like Garnet Kruger, we felt uh, mistreated by the, by the system. And you can put, put them on the same platform and they probably tell you the same thing. I mean, so we had to fight the system, which was unjust and, and unfair to us. Basically, at the time, you were given a game or two, and then you were out of the Proteus team without, without no valid reason as, as to why you, you're not given the same platform. Like maybe a Faf Duplessis who comes into the team and plays 15, 16, or 20 games. Classic case being A.B. de Villiers, who had played his first 30 games without a solid um, average. Everyone was calling for him to be to be dropped, but because whoever was in charge at the time believed in his, his in his talent, that come five ten years time he's gonna develop to be the player that Ab de Villiers is today. Why is it that players like Lloyd Bosman, Tandi Chabalala, Mondes or Ndeki were not given the same platform with the amount of talent that they had to be able to then blossom to be um, future international superstars? That that's unfortunately a question that nobody's prepared to answer and the system unfortunately didn't allow for that to happen yeah i mean there's there's, there's been plenty of drama in south african cricket with regards to with regards to that transformation all those things and i want you to come back one day i want us to unpack that i want us to unpack that um but uh, because we're a bit in, a bit limited with time today i want us to move on to the world cup i want us to move on to the world cup and you did mention a lot of the guys that you played with um, Faf Duplessis is a one. Andy the Pichuwa is someone who was coming through the ranks when you were at the Dolphins. All those guys were at the World Cup, and it just didn't happen, did it? No, it didn't. Um, yeah, I think it's been it's been very disappointing for me personally. I'm I'm really disappointed with with the leadership group. Um, there's always the so-called leadership group within the, the protest setup, And I think once again at the World Cup, those that uh, were supposed to stand up and be accountable, unfortunately, they've been disappointing. And I think um, looking at a few decisions that have been made uh, as an ex uh, as an ex-cricketer, um, I mean, one can tell you that uh, there have been 
a couple of schoolboy errors that have been made at, at the highest level at the World Cup. One decision being, I mean, leaving Mila out of the first game, that's, that to me was, was very surprising against an, an English team that in the last year, in the last two years, uh, seemed to be scoring 350 or more. I mean, if you're going to chase anything 350 or more, you probably need Mila, who's been a best batsman in the last two years, probably average is 60 or more. So to leave him out of the, the first game when he's the guy that you should be picking first was, was, was very puzzling for me. Yeah, it's, there's, there's just been a lot of uh, questions that unfortunately the captain has to answer. To bowl Petro Koyo in, 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 in the last over against New Zealand when he's been struggling on the day was very puzzling when you have a Rabada who was bowling Yorkers at, at will at the IPL and Morris. I mean, as a captain, if your bowler is struggling on the day, you, you cannot have him bowling your last over. And to, to have Ngidi bowling a slower ball to, to Williamson with that man up, with 12 runs to win of seven balls, is just a schoolboy error. It shouldn't be happening at, at the World Cup level. And, and I don't know what's, what seems to be happening with, with the leadership group. I don't know. The, the, there seems to be a stigma um, that, that just follows the leadership group when it comes to making critical decisions in critical moments at World Cups. Four years ago against the very same New Zealand opposition, we had Dale, St we had Dale Stein bowling death, uh, the last over and bowling length to Grant Elliott. It, it just cannot be happening. I mean, you have guys like Malinga, guys like uh, Uma Boom, Gould, another, just, Boombra, just who, 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 who show, who show <clears throat> case the world, who show it day in, day out that in those situations you need to be bowling death and it, 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 it remains the hardest uh, uh, ball to hit at, uh, at, the, at the end um, part of the innings. And, and for, for us to, to seem to be fiddling with the game, to seem to try and outsmart the opposition with back of the hand slower balls and all of these funny slower balls that we, For me, it's just you, you, you gambling with what shouldn't be happening. And, and for, for guys who have played uh, uh, international cricket for 10 years or more, for them to be able to have such mindset at critical stages, it's it's just mind boggling for me. It's 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 poor. It's poor thinking. What are the things that's that's always been, I guess, how can I put it? I look at other teams and I say, why why is it? I mean, you've obviously played at, at the highest level. Why is it that teams like Australia, India, they just seem to somehow say, okay, cool, we we're gonna turn it up a notch at the World Cup. Pakistan, another one. Yes, they blow hot and cold, but when they're hot. They're very hot and, and, and they seem to just have this fearless state of mind when it comes to the biggest tournaments. Why is that? Is that become a, a culture in, in, in our cricket? Or, or rather, let's look at this. Let's look at those teams and what they do right. Yeah, that's, that seems to be uh, how they go about, about, about things. I've, um, I've always maintained that Cricket South Africa seems to be have a lot of pride leading up to the World Cup in winning the series. I mean, if Pakistan comes to South Africa right now, we're probably going to thrash them forward. If India comes here, they're going to struggle. Any country that comes to South Africa. But I think we seem to be, we seem not to plan properly going to World Cups in terms of what the other nations do well. Other nations are prepared to lose a series mm. and chuck in a couple of youngsters and prepare for the World Cup, but for the big stage. We seem to struggle with transition from World Cup to World Cup. If you look at the Indian team, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, if you look at guys like Yuvraj Singh, guys like Guttap Gambia, those guys were at the prime of their game, but they were in their mid-30s. So immediately after the, the World Cup, they, they, they shifted to the side. And, and the next crop of young Indian players are then uh, brought in to be able to to be able to, to keep the transition going for the next two World Cups. If you look at the Proteus team right now, we, we've got guys that are 40, guys that are 36, 35, and we've had time to be able to look at them in the last two and a half years and see whether they perform to the level that's required to win the World Cup. And leading up to the World Cup, we can see that these guys have not been performing at that level. Mm. I mean, if, you, if and, and point in clear, we, we, have a case in, we have a case in Amla who struggled for a year and a half leading up to the World Cup. But we've taken him to the World Cup hoping that somewhere, somehow he's going to click mm. and he's going to be the Amla of old. Now, you don't have such things happening with the Indian team. Mm. 
they're very sure going to the World Cup that this three, this top three or this top five leading up to the World Cup, they're scoring help hundreds regularly for the Indian team to be able to get the start. That's not a hoping game. Whereas with our management, we've got the hoping game. We've got Dale Stein at the World Cup with an injured shoulder. Now we've had, we've had Dale Stein being injured for the last three years. It's, it's a case of a car out of motor plan. You, you just not, don't know what, what you're going to get. But we hope in Dale Stein is going to recover and be the Dale Stein of old at the World Cup. And that's, that seems to be the case with South African cricket. I'm not saying that Dale Stein shouldn't have been at the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. But Dale, if Dale Stein was supposed to win us the World Cup four years ago, we need to be realistic and say Dale Stein was at his peak at 31. And that's it. Then who's next for the next two World Cups? Mm. When was the last time a 19-year-old made debut for South Africa? Mm. You tell me, Fiso. When was the last time? We don't have that. The last time we had that was Quentin de Kock and was oh, yeah, uh, well. when Pauli Rabada. We don't have that happening. We're looking at guys at Morris who's 33, who wasn't meant to be there. Now he's turned up to be our best player at the World Cup. Mm. We don't have the transition that Australia has. And unfortunately, our, our best players or our senior players just don't know how to switch it when it's needed the most. So they need to be held accountable for poor performances at the World Cup. We, we at the World Cup with senior players either injured or not performing. Mm. Now, uh, you can't win the World Cup. You can't let alone qualifying for the semi-finals. It just cannot happen if you have Faf, if you have Amla, you've got JP, you've got Mila not performing at their level best. They need to be held accountable. Now, if you ask me what needs to be happen right now going forward, those guys, they need to be announcing their, 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 their retirements now against Australia. <laughs> Run about Saturday. They need to be announcing that that's it. It's done. That's it. We just don't know when to tell somebody who's giving us, yes, good service. Dan Stein is a, is, a, is a legend, but at the moment, you've got the public talking more negatively about right. Dan Stein in terms of his old... You, I'm like... Amla has been a legend of South African cricket. But in the last five months, you've got the public talking bad things about Amla because the selectors just don't know when to give a guy a break. Mm. The selectors just don't know when to move on and say, when is the next club for the next World Cup? So we carry these guys, and, and it's okay to carry somebody. If you, if you look at case in point, Sachin Tendulkar at, at 37 or 38 when he played the World Cup, he was still scoring 100 and producing. Mahendra Singh Don is doing the same thing. He's still producing. But if a guy is not producing and he's 35, 37, let's move on. It's as simple as that. Yeah, no, some big calls there. Some big calls. And I guess it's calls that some, some people find harsh. Um, and I know a lot of people will be listening in and, 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 and saying maybe we're being too hypercritical. But reality is we, we can look at the blueprint of, of some of the other teams and say, look, sometimes hard decisions must be made. Do we sometimes hold on to legendary status too much? He he must go out on his terms, you know. It, it I guess it's something that we can, we can debate about, you know, for, for a long time in terms of that. Because, again, like you're saying, those hard calls have to be made, and people need to be held accountable to that. So it's going to be interesting to see how it does rumble on. There's a couple of guys in the domestic circuit that that have put up their hand. Yes, they they you probably be thinking that they don't average fifty the way that AB does, but AB didn't start off averaging 50 as well. We need to look at potential and we need to back that potential and we need to sacrifice one or two series. It's okay for Pakistan to come in and, and smash us 3-1 if, if we have a plan that in four years' time we have a strong team that can compete and try and win the World Cup. But if we're going to be playing with, with, with guys that are 33, 34, trying to win a series against Pakistan, we're going to find ourselves wanting again uh, come four years time. So it's okay to, to blood in a couple of youngsters from SA under 19, a couple of youngsters that have uh, picked up their hands in the domestic um, circuit and back them. The reason that you, you, you have experience, you can only have experience by playing and playing and, and through trial and error. We need to be able to, to, to expose ourselves to that as a nation and, 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 be, and, and, and lose one or two games so that the guys can win because it's through losing, it's through mistakes that you, you gain experience so that you can, you can then perform at the, at, at the World Cup come for his time. Case in point, you look at the English team. 2015, they were atrocious. I think they went out in the group stages and they had to have a hard look at themselves and say, okay, how do we change this? And you look at how they've gone about their business now where you get an Indian set, I mean, an England setup whereby 
you can get dropped because of your strike rate rather than your average. Because now your strike rate, you're not going at the tempo that our game plan requires. Is yes, it? you're consistent, you're scoring runs, but a Hales will get picked ahead of uh, Alex Davies, mm-hmm. right? Because Hales is scoring at 130. Mm-hmm. He may average 37 and, and Davies averages 40, but he's scoring at 130 mm-hmm. and Davies is scoring at 85. There's, there, there's no match there. So they've made a call with regards to this is how we're going to play and this is what we expect. And that's that, regardless of who you are. Indeed. Um, I think, obviously, two years ago, um, England found, found that it, it, it's, it's, it's probably hard for them. They, they needed to, to, to be able to change. And, and what a change they've made. The last two years, they, they've identified the players. Like you said, they pick players on strike rate, not on average. The game is moving so quickly because of 2020 that in the next two, three years, the wickets are flat. The ICC rules in terms of restrictions of on how many players need to be in the ring. If you consider all of that, the game is swaying more towards the bats, towards batsmen, mm. and 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 I think I think uh, English cricket have, have certainly seen that, and they've been very proactive in terms of going on about things. If you listen to Ian Morgan, every interview he mentions the identity. If they've lost the game, he'll tell you that they probably were not where they're supposed to be in terms of their identity as, as a team. So that's, that's, that's their identity and that's, that's how they look to play. And, and it, had, had they kept the same players, which are which, which like, like Cook, like Ian Bell... I, I want, I, I've, I've just opened up the list here and I want, I want to mention some of these guys because let's, 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 let's not get things twisted, you know. We're not attacking anyone yet, but we're merely saying that if, if players don't fit into what you're trying to do, Regardless of who you are, you got to shift aside. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out some of these players: James Anderson, mm. Gary Balance, Ian Bell, Ravi Bopara, Stuart Broad, Stephen Finn, Alex Hales, Chris Jordan, James Taylor. I've mentioned about eight players there, proper players. Mm. Some guys, I mean, Gary Balance averages over 14 Test mm. cricket. Ian Bell, class, class. Stuart Broad, listen, Chief, I, it, this is it. Play test cricket. James Anderson, one of the, one of the <laughs> over 500 test wickets. After the last World Cup, thank you. Yeah, those are serious players we've mentioned there. And it just shows that um, with the English setup and with the Indian setup, it's about where they're trying to go. So they, they, once they've decided this is the direction they're willing to go, it doesn't matter whether you've played. 150 ODIs, if you no longer fit with what the plan is in four years' time, you're out. I mean, if you have, I mean, the, the case in point with the Indian team, like guys like Yuvraj, who's, who can make the Proteus team now, he can walk into the Proteus team as a finisher. But he was he was sidelined by India. Another case in point, Rayudu, right now, is just, he's, <laughs> he's just, just announced, <laughs> he's just called his retirement because he didn't fit the plan, because what Kohli believes what the, the, the BCCI and the selection believes in is two young guys to be able to, to get them to the next two World Cups. So, so I don't understand why it's such a struggle with us. We need to fight, identify a new identity for the Protea Fire to keep burning. We need to f- identify new players uh, and take a different direction because clearly the, the players that are there right now uh, have served us well, but the World Cup remains elusive to us. It, it remains the most wanting thing to South African cricket because we win in series. We've been number one in test cricket. That we've achieved. So maybe the focus now should be how do we win the World Cup? We've left uh, Riza Hendricks behind. We've, we've, we've left uh, one or two young players. The Milan brothers are, are chilling in Cape Town. I don't know when are we waiting. We're waiting for them to be 29 before we pick them for the Proteus. They've, they've, they've shown consistency. They've performed. But we wait for them to be 29, for them to be a product, right? I was picked when I was young. When, why can't we pick the guys when, they, when they're young and back them? We can't, we're not doing that. We want to back guys that are 34, 35 because what? We're scared to drop them. Why are we scared to drop people? Why are we scared to drop senior players? Yeah, sure. I can see the passion. It's, it's literally steaming off your body. You know, with regards to obviously that, and I, I know how much the, the pro tiers mean to you. I know how much cricket means to you. And uh, I guess those difficult decisions, it's, it's something that people have to sit around and, and discuss. The, the, the decision makers, 
and I, you know, you touched on a point there, and it, it, it saddens me when, when you hear like one of the greatest batsmen who come from this country. Yeah, I mean, you speak about Hashim Mamla, phenomenal. I mean, first guy to score a triple hundred for South Africa. I mean, fastest guy to I don't know three thousand, four thousand, five thousand runs in one day crickets, which was seen as not his game. And you hear people talking like this guy has achieved nothing in the game, you know. And you you come back to your point where sometimes you almost feel that someone needs to make the decision for you to almost protect your legacy mm. if you can't make it. Mm. You know what I mean? No, you know? definitely. I, I think that, that's been a trend. Um, I mean, if I look back at when I was studying uh, cricket as, as, a, as a 16, 17-year-old studying provincial cricket, for me it was very puzzling and, and it, was a, it was a similar case with... With the great Alan Donald, who who had who had obviously been a legend of South African cricket, and a similar pattern happened where Alan had a couple of injuries, and and you hear stories in the public that this guy should retire or this guy should happen, where where things could have been probably the legacy should, could have been protected a bit earlier. Like I said, I mean Hash, Hashim Amla has been phenomenal. Dale Stein has been phenomenal. This award well beaters Dale Stein is probably one of the greatest bowlers of yeah, all time. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and. If, if you listen to the general public, it's, some of the blame goes, goes to Dale Stein in terms of his injuries. Mm. The man is human. If the Indian board, BCC, I can make a call on Yuvraj Singh, Virenda Sewa, Gutam Gambia, these are world-class cricketers. If they can make a call on such phenomenal cricketers to say, guys, wait, 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 hold on, we, we've just played the World Cup, we didn't win the World Cup, this was your last crack at the World Cup, you didn't bring the trophy home, so therefore, we've got a Shikada one waiting in the wings. We've got Rohit Sharma. Rohit Sharma waiting in the wings. Pave the way. And then, and then those decisions are justified right now in this World Cup where you see uh, Rohit Sharma paying the faith, paying the faith back to the Indian community, back to the, to, to, to the panel of selectors and saying, thank you for showing faith. And now he's producing the goods. He's producing the goods where it matters the most. Mm. We're just not doing that. We're not doing that. We, we, we hope him. I guess the, the debate rages on, you know. A lot of the public have had plenty to say on social media with regards to how the proteins have gone about their business. Um, the anger's there, you know, the disappointment's there, you know. And I guess we can look back at it and, and probably arguably along with the World Cup we had at home in 2003 and say it's probably been our biggest disappointment. In terms of in terms of World Cups, we've had a lot of heartbreak, you know, but we've got haven't got to a semi final stage, but unfortunately this time it didn't quite happen. And I look back at this World Cup and I, I try and find a positive. I try and find a. I guess sometimes we dwell a lot on the negative, and it I guess it's 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 natural for a sports mad nation like like we have. I look back and I say we're gonna miss Imran here, you know, not let's forget about the crickets, you know. The, the the human being uh, you would have interacted with him um, I saw there was a clip on social media the other day where after the game against I think it was, it was Sri Lanka where he was helping one of the Sri Lankan spinners along with Shamsi who's seen as next in line good human beings like that aren't easy to find especially with the passion they have and and what they bring to the table and I, I'd, I'd like to end the show with a, with a tribute to Imran Tahir and what he's brought to, 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 to South African cricket, especially as a Pakistan-born player. What do you have to say about him? He's, he's been nothing short of incredible. Um, I think for me as a young spinner, certainly when I started, I, I, I wish that um, I probably had a guy like him in the change room. Um, I think for any young spinner to, to have a guy like that who's, um, who's very open and willing to share and willing to help is, is, um, is a plus. I mean, and I think you can, you can certainly learn a lot from, from a guy like Taya. Um, and I hope that Cricket South Africa will, will put him to good use. Uh, what's also puzzled me in terms, of, in terms of how the system seems to work is the heads, the people that really know the cricket, that have played cricket at the highest level and have experience are very f few in the system. Are very few in the system. If you look at um, the time that I played, um, I mean, the guys that I played with, very few are involved with cricket South Africa structures. So it, it makes you wonder if you're trying to produce the next 
best? Um, um, why do you have somebody who's never held a cricket bat or doesn't know how to have a cover drive in a position of somebody who should who should be there? So cricket South Africa really needs to look at its structures and who's in charge and 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 the impact of Tahir has been unbelievable and and obviously um he's coming towards the end of his career now and I think just his 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 knowledge can certainly be be used um, to a great deal um to the upcoming spinners um I struggle to find an interesting young spinner at the moment when I'm even watching first class cricket I don't know if you can mention any three exciting leg spinners or off spinners so that in itself is a crisis because that the development pipe it seems to be very thin up and 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 if the development pipe is thin then you have to question the coaches that are there whether they have the knowledge to be able to produce the spinners because spin bowling is is it's an art and the reason why it's an art you need the right guys to be able to teach the young cricketers from a young age what it entails to be a world class spinner that Tahir has been but if somebody doesn't know and is within the cricket south africa structures then it, it, it dims the light on the young spinner yeah, yeah. it really does dim the light on the young spinner because he's got no clue uh, how to bowl at different stages of the game i'm not talking about variations anyone can learn a googly it's when do you bowl it mm. how do you bowl it that's what tayer can certainly filtrate to the young sp- spinners in cricket south africa and past uh, spinners as well there's been a couple of guys that have that have played uh, for south africa spinners that cricket south africa can can use to be able to impart knowledge to young spinners coming up yeah no fantastic fantastic i mean yeah it's been a, it's been a show full of passion it's been a show full of um, really intriguing knowledge from uh, you know i always say to guys one of the one of the, the best cricket minds that I, i've had i've had the privilege of getting to know um and yeah you know i guess you said you said some some things that hit home you know you've said some things that that I think people should really listen to but the debate continues and I hope that we'll have you one day again back on the show to to chat more about crickets and and and, and the hottest things that are happening and uh, I think people also want to hear a little bit more about your story so hopefully one day Fabio will have you back on the show and uh, we can have some fun thanks much and thanks for having me um yeah you can give me a call anytime and um, I'll be ready to come through and and share my my thoughts Well, that's a wrap for episode 3 of the First Match show. It's been another intriguing one. We switched our focus from football to cricket and uh, that's kind of uh, where we're going to be going. We're going to be covering all different aspects of sport, you know, entertainment. We're going to having a lot of fun on the show going forward. Don't forget to keep subscribing, you know, follow at @podzilla media on all different platforms and make sure that you have all the know-how with regards to what is happening on the Pacific show. Fabo, are you on social media? You, ah, yeah, no, you, you're a drifter. You're not. You're not really active a lot on social media. So, um, but nah, not really. Um, I've got plans, obviously, to to start what I have uh, built on so far. So I think I'd probably use social media just to to be able to uh, show the the people what I do in terms of my academy, uh, in terms of my work. Other than that, um, you know, I'm uh, I'm chill. I don't like to feel much with uh, social media I, li- I like the old school way the private way and uh, yeah there's a lot to show on social media but I'm just I'm just not that kind well not that kind well that's up for debate <laughs> he smiles now as we end the show but it's fantastic to have Tandi Shabalala former Proteus spinner former like a VKB Knight spinner former Dolphin spinner former South Africa A spinner thank you for your time and uh, all the best going forward and uh, that's a wrap for the first month's show Goodbye.